nine hours into the year day of September. It's amazing how the month goes. So we're getting into another period of of bill payments and uh, purchases. Once a month, just around the eighth, seven or eight, there's bill payments, and then uh, after that, there's the purchase. Then it dies down for the rest of the month. <laughs> uh, so as I said, we go week by week, month by month, and uh, season by season. And the large chunk of the reason why I do other things is because the work in astrophysics and so on and so forth is lengthy. It takes a long time to do, and there's a lot of nothing in between, so that gives you time to do other things. And, uh, so I began, as I was working on some of the projects in uh, quantum physics, I had gotten stuck in terms of an understanding, and so my understanding of things is that in order to see ahead, sometimes you have to look and see where you've been. And I had never done that. I had never t done a sort of a history of quantum mechanics, of quantum physics, and did the who's who of, uh, of quantum physics quantum mechanics, so I did that, and, and it really opened up a lot in terms of theology and, uh, uh, and even history, how uh, the scientists, in particularly the Gnosis part of the science, because the Gnosis were always connected to, with, the phys with physics. Uh, Newton, Leibniz, Planck were all Gnostics. They were all part of the Gnosis crowd, uh, and they included uh, metaphysics within their uh, studies. It wasn't separate. Now it was only it was Voltaire who began this sort of the, if you will, the separation. Between uh, what what he called the sciences, the philosophy of science, and the call the so called philosophy of of uh, metaphysics. And at these times, they, they were still viewed as philosophies more than anything else. Uh, even the practitioners called themselves philosophers. So it, 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 there is a certain amount of, uh, uh, well, with everything, a certain amount of ambiguity that goes on. Uh, when you have these discussions, so <laughs> this is why you have to do these deeper dives. I begin looking at the various different, uh, more or less, the, the, the physicists. I ran into more and more of the Gnostic, I ran more and more into the metaphysics, and began to realize that they were never separated. And that the world, the so called, we'll call the Gnostic world, was always there, and it still is there today. We just sort of have, it's been pushed out of our minds. And then a lot, even when they say, oh, you have to use the metric system because it's scientific, well, no. The whole metric system was developed to push people away from the Gnostic. It was, the, as Voltaire put it, it's the beginning of humanism. Humanism gives you the sense of the world as man is the ultimate being. It's man himself who is supreme and that God is created in our image, not we are created in the image of God. And the thing is, this 
evolved from Roman Catholicism. Who uh, separated man from God. The whole creation of the vicar of Christ in terms of the papacy put the religion of Christianity and this is why it was opposed in the East. It separated man from God. There was no sort of linkage, you know, not a link, linkage, a, a oneness with God. It became once again the immortal and the mortal. It, this, it went back to a, a form of paganism. So Christianity was nothing more than a form of a, a, another form of paganism. And this is why a lot of people say, oh, this, these are just simply pagan holidays with a with, 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 with the, with the, the new name. And, they, and that's, they're correct. But that's not, that's not, that's not the early Christian church. That's the, well, the, the, the Roman Catholicism. And we have to remember that Roman, the Roman Catholics, the papacy, uh, with the Holy Roman Empire, they're the ones who created Europe. Europe is, a front, is fundamentally and essentially uh, the Holy Roman Empire. And so anything that evolves from that, anything evolved, that evolves from the West, is this in its nature. And this is why, what causes a lot of confusion, because people say, oh, Roman Catholicism is one thing, and then the, the Protestant is another, and humanism is another. I think it's what happens, it was under, out of the humanists that you get the socialists, the communists, the, uh, the nationalists, and a lot of the isms, and this includes the scholastics, uh, the scholasticism, skepticism. A lot of things emerged from the humanist point of view. The secularists, Secularism emerged as well. And so what happens is that things just like just like you have multiple Protestant denominations, or in many cases multiple Catholic denominations, different rites. Uh, same thing is true for humanism. Humanism broke up into a lot of different a lot of different perspectives. And this is why you know you, you know Lionel still on this whole thing about uh, communism sort of. Thing. If it, I know if someone uses the term communism or communist, then I'm talking to a child. Well, this is a huge mistake here uh, because he's the child. Doesn't understand that, that, that these things broke up into a spectrum of things. And there's an entire history of arguments over who was a communist and who wasn't a communist, even at the back at the point of time of Stalin. And th this has been well written, well written and well documented, even by the, the particularly from my perspective. Uh, looking back in hindsight, I think the person who got it the, the most right was Dostoevsky. But the thing was, this was understood by H.G. Wells, uh, George Bernard Shaw, and a number of others who were influential in the world. We don't understand how these people, you know, were influential, but they were. Uh, if you ever know about the uh, London School of Economics, and you can sort of le learn about it a little bit more, if you look at the uh, old BBC production uh, called uh, Yes Minister, Yes Prime Minister, uh, you'll understand how... important the London School of Economics was in terms of its socialism. You're wondering where you get all these things today about, you know, uh, social justice, social justice warriors, and the right for the common man. Well, that, came, uh, that all came out of the London School of Economics. That's where that all was. And the founders of uh, the London School of Economics, if you go into its history, well, it's George Bernard Shaw, H.G. Wells, and uh, something called the Fabian Society. And so what happens, you go, oh, Glenn Beck's an idiot. Well, yeah, he's an idiot, but he's partially right. And this is the thing. When you do particular research, you haven't found everything. Even if you do a deep dive, you only have, have a certain perspective. And so every once in a while, you have to go back and do a deep dive again on the same subject. Just to, go, just to find out what you've missed. And there's 
they're, they're almost a guarantee that the, every time you do it, you'll find something new and find something, a different perspective that you never, never really considered before. And all of our discussions over the summer have all been musings from my notes that I collected before. So the, uh, uh, the notebooks are set up, and I'll begin filling out the notebooks uh, just in a couple of weeks. We didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to get this much out of Lionel LeBron, but I did. Connecting him to Voltaire. It did, because you're looking at a personality type. How does a person like Voltaire deal with the things he's dealing with? How does he see, well, how does his perspective work out? What would his personality be like? Well, you can, it's not, it's not going to be exactly the same as Lionel, but if you have some, uh, somewhat of an idea by looking at Lionel LeBron, that you actually can see uh, aspects of Voltaire within line. And I find that, so, that, you know, this is something interesting, is that you look at studying people. And, you know, this is one way of studying people. You can, you, you can do this <laughs> people study on, on social media. But I guess people present all types of themselves. You don't just look at one picture that they post. You look at a lot of them. You know, who is the president? Is he always like this? Is he always like that? Do you have anything else for you? Know, and you and it, it takes a while to observe a person. It doesn't you know, occur overnight. been uploading as well, so it's not really as bad. And we have interesting, interesting discussions uh, on the goings on of day, the shifts in thoughts, and the global going on. Who decides what's best for society? Typically, the ones who decide what's best for society 
are actually part of society. They're, they're elevated from society. And they've elected themselves to say, oh, these people need us to tell us how to live and what to do and explain, you know, what's good for them and what's not, what, what's bad for them. This was in, uh, well, yes, Prime Minister. This very sentiment of the bureaucracy telling us what's good for us. These well-meaning humanists saying this is good and that's good, or this is bad and that's bad. Okay, just enough time to get out. So there we go. We're out. It's Labor Day weekend, I was supposed to go away, but I uh, never did. Things came up, and so here I am back on the road again. I do enjoy the road. I do uh, enjoy scooting back and forth. It gets me outside for a bit, anyways. This is my outside time, even though I'm going to do the observation tonight. Uh, I am now outside, so I do enjoy it. And it's cool enough, I think, the only thing I'm going to change, all I'm going to do is take my helmet off. Anyways, back to our conversation on humanism. We are now living in a society without rules. There are no laws, no justice, no courts protect us, nothing. The courts will do whatever they want to do, whatever is expedient for them, that's what they're going to do. There are no rights and no concerns that the judges will be disciplined in any manner in terms of if they do something wrong. It's only if they go against the political will who defines what society is. Go against what we call the societal norms of what the decided by our political leaders, and then that's it. That's the end of their, that's the end of their judicial career. So, so we're in a world where now we have to sort of fend for ourselves, and there are no fundamental definitions, which isn't, isn't necessarily a bad thing for myself. But there are those who, because I am anti-establishment to begin with, I sort of live an off-grid life, uh, not necessarily connected to society or any one particular group. But there are those who need to be defined by a particular group or need, need to have order and a place in society. And it's driving them up a wall. They simply can't handle the fact that there is no longer a status or existence within status Unless, of course, you're part of a particular social group. And this is what a lot of Lionel, of Lionel, this is what a lot of, a lot of, what Lionel, uh, of Lionel Nation is actually expressing. Expressing his displeasure of not necessarily having a standing, realizing that he doesn't fit anywhere within society. That he's alone. But then there's a lot of people who are alone. There are a lot of people who see things in a manner that just don't, doesn't fit with, with, with everybody else. And this is what a nerd is. This is what I think anyone who knows what anime is knows this. They're kind of in a world of their own. They don't have a fundamental place or existence in anything else. That's what a weeb is. Nerds are like that as well. And we get to realize, and you look at enough in the anime, enough in the anime crowd, that, that, that there are a lot of uh, anime fans. But in many cases, when you first realize this, it's difficult to sort of wrap your mind around the fact that this is the case. You don't want to be out with the streets. You want to be within the crowd. Until you get the understanding, this is where I'm at right now, is that... It's all right to be out with, outside the crowd, to not be one of the freaks. I don't have a problem with it. I'm living just as well. 
you look at others who are with in the crowd, that drives themselves bonkers. The level of depression for those who need the crowd, who, who, who desire the crowd, is unbelievable. In some cases, they even stop talking to anybody. It's just their whole, their whole existence is, in many cases, just ceased. And as the world ceased, they began to cease in uh, in terms of cease in the terms of their existence. So they have no longer have an existence. difficult to fathom that people don't have an existence. There is no fundamental existence. But this is sort of the nature the nature of humanism at the end is this random bit of destruction. Then there's self-destruction. From there you move into Gnosis. And this is where you see on both sides of the aisle you look at the nihilists who become, nihilists become the spiritualists. They become the shaman. And the uh, The anarchists who are doing all the violence become uh, warlords. There is no excelling in the society that they're in, in terms of our transition period now. Right now, it's like surfing. You have no direct idea what direction it's going to come. You just have to wait until it comes and then make a move. And that's something that's very difficult to sort of comprehend. And for many people it's almost impossible because they need certainty and they need structure in their lives. But that's going to disappear very, very soon. because they were talking about the Chinese always taking over. You know, a lot of these articles you read, they were often reading about the Chinese advance. And it's not a military advance. It's what happens is that as the Western world collapses, as it destroys itself, uh, the Chinese are moving in. And there's almost no resistance because they're, we, we, we've become so weak, we've become so disheartened that there's nothing left for them to do. 